Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for pressing charges? My cousin turned 18 recently. She's in high school, she doesn't have a car, and during her birthday weekend, thought her parents were going to buy her one. They didn't get her one and she was pretty upset. I should note that I'm not very close with my cousin, or the rest of my extended family for that matter. I only heard about this through the grapevine from my dad. Anyway. My cousin texts me on the Friday before her birthday, asking if she can take my car, I just leased a new Ford Escape, to the mall, and then for an out of town road trip with her friends over the weekend. I tell her no. She begs and pleads with me. I tell her no again. My car is for me to drive and for me only. If she wants her own car, she can save up and buy one. She calls me a witch and says that I ruined her birthday, and that she's embarrassed because her friends think she got a car for her birthday, and she doesn't have one. I don't respond to her and think nothing of it. The weekend comes and I sleep and very late on that Saturday, waking up at 1 pm. Don't judge lol. Even though my car is parked in my driveway and my gate is closed, I come to realize that someone egged and TP'd my car. With many, many eggs and 5 to 6 rolls of TP. And since the weather was warm outside, the raw egg baked into my car, along with the dried up toilet paper, destroying the paint. Since I have security cameras around my house, I decide to go back and watch. At around 9.30ish that morning, I see my cousin and a bunch of her stupid friends, vandalizing my car. I'm surprised she didn't smash the windows and poke holes in the tires too. To save my post from the 3000 character limit, I obviously press charges and my cousin is in legal trouble. Her and her parents are pissed off at me for pressing charges, her parents telling me that she's, just a kid, and that she's been through a lot of emotional stress doing virtual schooling for this past year and that I should take that into consideration, and, that I should be ashamed of myself for pressing legal charges against my baby cousin, that I'm almost 30, and don't I remember what I was like at that age? I do remember, and I wasn't stupid enough to egg anyone's car. And can't she work something out with me, like doing chars around my house for money if I drop the charges? That she's young, that she doesn't need a felony on her record, etc., and that it was just a prank. Right after I pressed charges, my cousin was calling and texting me over and over, saying that this could have been avoided had I let her take my car. Am I the a-hole in this situation? I need to add that my cousin already has a felony on her record, a DUI. She's not remorseful of anything. Also, my aunt and uncle will not pay me for the damages. They just want me to drop the charges and pay for everything myself like nothing happened. They are cheap. Now, for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Sure, you could have spoken with them first before pressing charges, but that last sentence was very telling. That she would text you and basically retroactively threaten you to let her take the car or she'd vandalize it, says a lot about her character, and she'd probably have charges pressed against her at some point in the future anyway. Hopefully she learns a lesson to avoid that happening again. Also, chores around the house to make up for it? It's called community service ordered by the judge. Chores around the house for money no less, not sure in what world we reward vandals with jobs for ruining other people's stuff. I was thinking that part of the payment would go to repairs. But I wouldn't let such vandal anywhere near my house to be honest. Also, I clean my own house so I have money for the things I want. If I have to pay someone to clean it so they can turn around and pay me for property they destroyed, that's just me losing money on a housekeeper but with extra steps. It's actually much worse, because I'll have to supervise and nag and deal with things that never get cleaned like I want. This business of paying kids for chores that you were never going to pay someone to do in the first place, is for the birds. Not the a-hole, please update us as well, I wanna hear her suffering the consequences of her actions. If OP's cousin ever says, this could have been avoided if OP lent her the car, tell the cousin's parents, this could have been avoided if they had bought her a car, thus leaving the blame where it belongs, on her parents for being cheap, and yet managing to raise an entitled brat. Tell them, all of this could have been avoided if they used birth control. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for turning off my phone while my sister has a mental breakdown? My sister Danielle is 23 female, she has undiagnosed mental problems which are made worse by her smoking weed. I just wanna say, it is legal here and I have no problem with it, however she spends all her money on weed and it truly affects her life. I try to talk to her about getting help and she says she doesn't have a problem. I've helped her out in the past where she lived with me and I paid all the bills but I kicked her out when I found her having s in my bed, when I came home early from work. Lately, 
I moved to different city and I stayed with her and a friend where I sent my sister my portion of the rent, stupid I know, with her history, but it's been a couple years from the previous story, but it turns out she was pocketing the money and only found out when we got an eviction notice. I make enough money to be comfortable and just left her behind. I moved to a nice apartment close to work and she had to go to a women's shelter, which she got kicked out of, because she couldn't follow their curfew and no drug rules. Danielle is staying with my other sister Lisa, 21 female, and Danielle is currently having a mental breakdown and is acting completely spaced out, and doing weird things like smearing peanut butter on her own face. My whole family is calling me to go pick her up and take her to the hospital, they all live in the same city, but she won't go with me and I'm not going to force her into my car. So, I told them to call an ambulance and shut my phone off ignoring it. Honestly, I'm the older sister so I feel a bit bad for ignoring the situation, but I'm just done with her. Am I the a-hole for turning off my phone? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If they all live in the same city, why don't they take her? She's not your responsibility, and you can't force her to go as she is an adult. But why doesn't Lisa take her? She lives with her. Lisa can't drive at night and Danielle is a bigger girl, so it's hard to force her to go somewhere she doesn't want to. Well if Lisa and your family feel she is a danger to herself or others, they can always call an emergency line. Ambulance, police, etc., at least till they get her to a hospital. Not the a-hole, especially based on the idea that they want you to force Danielle to go with you. That's creating a dangerous situation. You're allowed to protect yourself, physically and mentally. I've seen people lose it as a passenger. Hard pass on the unstable co-pilot. I don't want to die. I'm a bit confused by the geography of where everyone is living, which could have an impact if the rest of your family couldn't get to her, but since it seems that she's living with your other sister, I don't think the weight falls on you, just because you're the oldest, you all are adults at this point. So, not the a-hole. Sorry, I lived in Ontario when Danielle moved in with me, I found her having s in my bed and kicked her out, where she moved to Nova Scotia to move in with my siblings. I then moved to Nova Scotia and stayed with Danielle for three months, where we got evicted cause she was pocketing the rent. We all still live in the same city in NS. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for storing my mom's engagement ring in her old jewelry box so my dad couldn't find them? Context, this happened 20 years ago. My mom died when I was 9. My dad and I moved out of town after her death a few months later, and after the move. He met his current wife. Their relationship was a whirlwind and she was living with us within 5 months, and they were talking about getting married. My dad's wife expressed interest in my mom's engagement ring at the time. My dad was open to her having it and asked me if I would give it for them to use. I said no. He was disappointed, and said it would be a way of tying her to our family. I was so afraid he would use it or sell the jewelry box that my mom owned, that's technically an antique, that when my grandparents came to see me. I asked them to hold on to both so she couldn't get them. This is where I mentioned that both were from my mom's side of the family. My grandma gave my dad the ring, to give to my mom when they were getting engaged, and she left it to me in her will. My grandparents were originally going to keep them safe for me as instructed, but I wanted them with me and so they let me keep them. I just went with the original instructions because I did not want them being given to my dad's new wife, or sold to buy her a ring. My dad was upset at me about the ring but didn't know about the jewelry box. I lied, and said we must have left it behind, which after getting annoyed about and tearing the house apart, he accepted it as fact. They found out about it about 5 years ago. He was annoyed, his wife was pissed and the relationship that was already strained, became even more awkward. My dad brought it up again a few weeks ago, because he heard my daughter talk about how we all use the jewelry box to store our precious things inside of it. And he asked me why I would let the kids use it and risk breaking it, when I wouldn't be okay with it going toward a ring that would help make his wife part of our family. I said the kids are always supervised, and they, are part of my mom's family too, which is why I want them to use it as well, since she's their grandma. My dad said it was petty and immature to do what I did when I was 10. Am I the a-hole? I was planning to respond to comments with this but since a few asked I thought this would be much easier. My dad was not a wealthy person and the ring was worth more than anything he could have ever afforded. She wanted something expensive, and it didn't matter to her if it was my mom's or not. She never even flinched when lusting over it, and saying she would love to see it on her finger. His idea to sell the music box would have been to get the money from it, since it was an antique, 
and match or pass the value of my mom's ring. So basically, she wanted it to show off how expensive her engagement ring was, and both of them knew he couldn't afford something like that on his own. I will always be glad I had my grandparents to give them to, and I was able to do so before my dad started looking for it, or they would have stolen it. I have no doubt about that. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Why would his new wife even want a family heirloom? She has no connection to it. If I was in her place, I wouldn't even want to take it away from you. It was your grandmother's and mother's ring. You are not in the wrong. I just think that's so disrespectful to your mom to give her ring to a new wife after she died. Personally, I think he should have planned on buying her a new ring. Not the a-hole. Don't feel bad. Why would his new wife even want a family heirloom? Sounds like they wanted it to sell it for a new ring. Not the a-hole. She left it to me in her will. If that's the case, it's yours, and your dad had no right to ask you for it. It's pretty weird anyway to re-gift an engagement ring to your second wife. Honestly, beyond that, I think it shows poor character that he was pressuring a 10-year-old to give up her own precious reminder of her mother that was left explicitly to her, so that he could give it to his new girlfriend. I would call that a really inappropriate attempt to use parental authority, to steal something that didn't belong to him. I think OP made the right move. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister she needs to tell my niece where babies come from before a disaster happens? About a week ago, my daughter, 8, came to my husband and I and asked how come her, female, guinea pig couldn't have babies, and that her friend's guinea pig, friend has a male and a female, had some. Well, husband and I looked at each other and figured it was time, so daughter got the talk. We spoke as plainly as we could, and also told her to take any questions to us and to not be embarrassed. We have already been big on bodily autonomy, but we also worked that in a bit here. It was fairly uneventful, though she did give us a somewhat horrified look once she put two and two together, and avoided us for the rest of the day after that, lol. So, I was recounting this to my sister on the phone yesterday. She was horrified and said 8 was way too young to hear about that type of thing. She then said I needed to tell my daughter not to talk about that with my niece, who is 13, because she doesn't know about it. I was shocked. It turns out, niece doesn't know about the mechanics of it all or periods or anything. I got really curt with my sister, and told her she needs to tell niece, like yesterday. What's gonna happen when her period comes and she's terrified? I also told my sister, if she doesn't know how a baby is made, she's at higher risk for doing the exact thing without any protection, and then you have a bad situation on your hands. This was apparently too far and my sister hung up the phone on me. I've been getting nasty messages from her and her husband all day. I really don't think I'm the A, but, did I take it too far? Am I the A-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the A-hole. Lamau, if that girl is in school. She definitely has a pre version of what copulation is, which is probably even worse. Add in social media and such, and that girl knows. Her parents should decide to have the talk with her ASAP. Hell, don't they talk about it in middle school anyways? You are totally not wrong, and your sister is going to have an even harder time explaining it once her daughter lets her know she's learned everything from other preteens. Kids at 13 are definitely talking about us. I also feel you did the right thing telling your daughter the scientific truth at age 8. When my daughters were 11, our Girl Scout troop went to a girls grow up program at the local health center. 15 girls and all the moms went. The girls knew most of it. The best moment was when the woman talked about peel and stick sanitary products and said, girls, adhesive side down. The moms all laughed, because it literally never occurred to us that we needed to tell them that. Not the a-hole. A child who doesn't have that learning is more easily manipulated by predators too. Aw oh, this makes me sad. I know it's true, but damn. You think you're sheltering your kid, but in reality, you're opening them up to more harm. Not the a-hole, but I doubt she doesn't know. That's taught in school at 10 to 12, and even if they pulled her out of that, her classmates would have talked about it. Unless she's homeschooled. And has no friends. And that's the end of this video folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, Turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.